my fear of annoying people or frustrating people or making them cry or being too direct or all of the things that, that I worry that I'll be accused of, of being a jerk. Anytime that you want to tell someone the truth but you're worried about hurting their feelings so you don't or so you kind of soften it, you're hedging. Oh, I mean, all hedging is, though, is you softening things that you truly believe. You know, you get that spark of excitement and you go, what if? <gasps> what if? And then you're going, uh, no, doubt. That is a hedge. You go to shout something out at someone and you're worried that they're going to take offense to it, so you change your language. That's a hedge, right? You decide that I'm going to set a goal to, in two years, make something happen, and then I go, let's make it four. That's a hedge. Any time that you remove yourself from a potentially uh, challenging situation because you're gonna be too clear, you're gonna be too direct, you're gonna be too on point, any time that you change who you are or what you're saying for fear of the other person giving you one of these looks like, what? That is a hedge. You don't realize how terrible it is, but that is holding you back and that is destroying you. It really is. Because it means that you're actually really, 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 really worried about what other people think of you. I don't want to intimidate people. I don't want any of those things. So I'm afraid of what people think of me. I want to be a nice guy, so I hedge. Think about the last time that you sat down with your significant other across from them and you told them what you really thought of them. Not the nice things. Not, not the like, I feel so in love with you now. I feel so close to you right now. No, like the direct things. Think about it. Think about when you're speaking to someone and they got something stuck in their teeth. How long and how much you think in your head, like, hey, should I be the person to tell them they have something stuck in their teeth? But what if I don't? Like, I should, probably shouldn't do that. It's gonna embarrass them. But what if they go off now and speak to someone else and that person tells them and then they realize they were talking to me and I wasn't the person to tell them that? You're wasting a bunch of time. Just say like, hey, real quick, sorry, just, you just got something stuck in your teeth. I just wanna let you know, right? If you think of that inner monologue, you're hedging. All of these things are hedges. There are a lot of ways where we hedge. We all have stories we tell ourselves and so, I was told that I was a really confident person, even though I don't feel confident. I was told that I come across as arrogant, or that I'm really blunt, or that I'm really direct, and I feel like I hold stuff back. I've been told that I'm intimidating to people, because I speak with, I guess, authority, or passion, or I know what I'm talking about. I see myself as a nice guy, and I don't see myself as intimidating, but I'm told all these things, and so for fear, of being intimidating, for fear of putting pressure on people, of being too direct, of being seen as arrogant. For fear of all of these things, I go the opposite direction, which is a hedge, the major hedge. I don't want to offend people with the black and white things that I think. So I soften them. And when I soften them, I don't stand for anything. I introduce all kinds of areas of being vague and it's unclear what I'm saying and then people are left to guess. And sometimes the things they guess are actually worse than the very things that I'm thinking. My wife walks in and I say, are you wearing that? What does she hear in that moment, right? If I, if I say it that way, right? Rather than me just saying, hey, I think you should put on a cover up or something. It's gonna be pretty cool tonight, right? But uh, hey, we're gonna be going out and there's gonna be lots of bugs and I'm worried you're gonna get covered with mosquitoes. Maybe you wanna cover up a little bit more. But all I said was like, oh, you're wearing that? Because I didn't, I was like, I was tiptoeing into the conversation. That, <laughs> I've been married long enough, that does not lead to a very good place because what she hears with, oh, are you wearing that, is like, what, it doesn't look good on me, I don't look good, what's wrong with me, all of these other things. This hurts us. This softening that we've been conditioned to do hurts us in business, especially, but in our relationships, in, in our dreams, right? How much do we hedge our dreams? You know, we write down, so what is it, it's 2019, in 2021, uh, I want to double my business. So now the hedging mark would say, well, like, is that even possible? And how do I get 50% growth year over year? And do I have the team? And do I have the clients? And do I have the structure and all of this stuff? But rather than doing that, the non-hedging me just said, great, I'm going to double my business. So we're, you know, we're going to, we're a little over 2 million. We're going to be at $4 million revenue. What does that look like, a $4 million company? And what does my day look like? And what does my team look like? And who do my clients look like? And what does the pace look like? And what is the structure? And then I go, I can handle that. I can handle the $4 million company. I can find the people and I can have the structures in place with the right team and I can find the clients because I'm driving enough value. Doubling my company in two years is inevitability, right? Like it's done, it's done. Now I just gotta go through the motions. I, like I am, I am confident that we're gonna double our business. Two years actually seems slow to me. <laughs> I'll be very disappointed and very surprised if we don't. 
that's not because I'm asking the question with a bit of a hedge like, hey, I want to be a millionaire. And it's like, can I be? I can't be. It's just deciding what needs to happen to make it happen, right? That starts to remove the hedge. You know, we see this the most when you filter what's in your head from what you say to people. So when you close your eyes and you imagine your life, you imagine your dreams, whether that's family or the type of relationships you want. For me, you know, I, I can dream, I can picture what my house will look like after we renovate. So four years ago, we bought this house that was built in the 60s. That's basically run down. It's basically falling apart. It was in really, really rough shape and I loved it. I loved it because I felt like I was getting like a deal and I wasn't buying someone else's version of my life. I was buying just a shell. When we moved in four years ago, I already knew the renovations I wanted to do. The second story addition, so my wife and I could actually have an ensuite. We have four kids. Four kids and the two of us, one bathroom. So you can just imagine what it's like with almost teenagers. So we're picturing the ensuite. We're picturing our renovation. We had this old 40 year old pool. I spent the last two or three years renovating. I can picture what the pool looks like, what the siding looks like, what the dormer windows I'm gonna add look like, the front porch with a portico, with the hanging chandelier. I can picture all of it. What I couldn't figure out was how I was gonna pay for it. Because when we moved into our house, we took on a bigger mortgage than we've ever had before. So not only do we have to pay down our mortgage, we have to save up an equal amount to our mortgage just to make these renovations happen. Here's the thing, I am 100% confident that we will do this to this house. I don't know if it's in two years, or four years, or six years, we're four years in now. Right now, I'm like, I'm so confident we're gonna do this in the next two years. Even though I don't know yet how it will happen, I'm telling my wife, like, like we're getting ready. We're getting ready because it's 9, 2019 and 2021. We gotta move out of our house for three months. We gotta rent another place because our house is getting torn apart because we're making these renovations happen. Because my daughter is thir gonna be 13, she's gonna be 15 then. You better believe she needs her own space. We need our own bathrooms, we need our stuff. This is happening. I started saying this is what we wanna do at our house and I could see on their face the reactions to what my dreams are and how amazing it's gonna be. And then I start saying to my wife, we're gonna make this happen. You know, even if we have to take on more debt. Even if the recession happens, and you know what, it's not in two years, it's in two and a half. I am moving forward every year, putting the steps in place that I need to put in place to be able to handle the financing for making these things happen. Because it will happen. Because we also know we're gonna be in our house for our entire lives. We bought our house saying, this is the house our grandkids are gonna come visit us in. And so when you're thinking super, super long term, a year or two here, a little bump there does not scare me, does not bother me. And that, that applies for your business. When you're building a business with a three-year exit plan or a five-year exit plan, it's so short, you're so impatient, you're in such a hurry that you don't give it the time that it needs. But if you're planning to work on your business and have build something that's lasting forever, you have time. Like You have time to get through a downturn or a recession. You have time to have a few bad years and to scale down to the core group just to blow it back up and build it again. You have time to ride the highs and you have time to get through the lows. You have time. But all of this, all of this comes from it being up here and then you believing in it and you sharing it with someone and you not hedging to yourself and you not hedging to them what you fully believe will happen. Because whenever I've gotten behind something with like an insane amount of delusional confidence, it happens. So like I have, I have a 1974 Austin Mini that I've been restoring for a very long time. I've had it for almost 20 years. And I bought it in high school when I lived in a place where I could put it in the garage of the place. And then I moved out, my uh, sister sold the place and we had no garage. I was in an apartment, I had no place to keep it. I don't know where I'm gonna keep this car. So I'm telling my brother-in-law, I don't know where we're gonna keep this car. And my brother-in-law has this crazy idea that he's gonna buy an old school bus. So he's like, well, I need cheap storage. I, you know, he needed storage for, for his work and for tools and things like that. And he's like, storage is really expensive, but he could buy an old school bus for $150. <laughs> so he buys this old school bus for $150 and he parks it in a farmer's field. And then this, this is what insane confidence gets you. We take Sawzall and we cut the back of the bus off and we cut all the seats out and then we build this like this like ramp for the back doors and then we spray foam it. But anyway, we build this ramp and so we, we, we have this ramp that can drop, we can push my car into a bus 
and we can close it up and that's where I stored it for like three years. Like that has nothing to do with hedging, but it's like, it's bizarre to me, right? We did it. I had to dig this big hole for my pool because we were putting a set of stairs in. And so I had asked my cousin if I could borrow an excavator. And so he, he brings a dump truck with a huge float and pulls off this mini excavator that was 12,000 pounds. And he goes, you know how to do uh, cat controls, right? And I was like, yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah, I mean, I've spent like five minutes in an excavator like 10 years ago, for sure. So I, pop, I jump in and away I go, right? It wasn't that I was scared or that I was nervous or anything. It was just like, I was like, yeah, I can do this. Like I, I can, I can 100% control, like finesse this cat excavator. Total, con like insane amounts of delusional confidence. And that is the way that you can get into things and attack things and get things done. I was listening to a study where they basically said the number one um, difference between making things happen and not making things happen is confidence. It's not skill, it's not ability. It is literally just deciding that something will happen and then knowing it will happen and also knowing that if it doesn't happen, you will be able to adjust. So the solution to hedging is 100% to have confidence in what you're doing, to know that it will happen. So every time that you hedge, you're saying you value what the other person is thinking of you more than you value your own self, your own confidence, your own abilities. And so first, be aware of it. Like have an accountability partner, have someone say, wow, a major hedge right catch yourself train train yourself to catch yourself hedging because you can do it I've done it with myself when I'm speaking when I'm writing when I'm working with someone I will say it and then go I'm sorry that was a major hedge what I meant to say was this and then you say the hard truth they'll forgive you you can even say listen I I'm really worried that it's gonna come across the wrong way. So please take it for what I'm saying and not the words I'm using, not how it comes out. Now, if you find that nine out of 10 conversations you're walking away with, people are hurt, uh, they're, they're crying, they're angry, you've gotten into arguments, then, then you have a problem. You have a deeper problem than hedging, right? You need to work on some other things. But for the most part, that's not gonna happen. For the most part, when you are more direct, when you're more clear, you will come across as more confident. People will actually have stronger uh, assurances in what you're saying and they'll believe you a little bit more. And for yourself, you'll feel this weight lifted off you because you're not busy worrying and carrying around all the time how you're gonna come across and what people think. But if you are a hedger, the way that I've been a hedger, I'm 36, I've been hedging for a very long time. Make sure that you're catching yourself, make sure you're correcting yourself, Make sure you have people around you who are willing to call you on hedging. But then when you know you're hedging, you have to push through. You have to say, oh, I'm really uncomfortable with this. I wanna hedge, but I cannot let myself hedge. Push through, see what happens. That's your phone. That's your phone, Jason. Is everything okay or is it just an update on what's happening with the Raptors? My sister just got a job. Congratulations. If you want to take your business to the next level by getting stronger at sales, at marketing, at branding, at speaking to people, at understanding your message, your purpose, and everything you need to do to crush it, well then be sure to subscribe to my channel. I release videos every day. Click on the bell icon so that way you can get the videos when they drop. Or you can check out this video right over here. It will change your life.